Hey fellow back there boys, Nick here. Last summer I asked you guys if you wanted to see my flint napping and I got a lot of really good response from that video. But you know, I really haven't been doing much flint napping so I didn't really do a video but I figured you know last week was the uh, Glass Buttes nap in. I went out met some really cool guys and picked up some more rock so I figured today I was going to show you some of my flint napping. Now I'm trying to learn percussion flint napping. It's the idea of, you know, you start with a rock and you beat it until you get a blade or something like that. Not very good at that, so I'll show you guys what I kind of taught myself, which is uh, pressure flaking on a slab. So this is a slab of midnight lace. This is a rock of midnight lace. And it's kind of neat. It's kind of a transparent sort of gray with some black running through it. This one's mainly transparent gray. I don't know if you can even see that on camera. But So I'm just going to show you guys how I flint map this. I'm going to be using some simple tools. I'm going to be using a pressure flaker. This is a two-sided pressure flaker. This is a PVC pipe. This is a just a regular, kind of a larger size nail. And then this is a kind of a smaller, more finishing nail. This is what I use for notching and fine pressure flaking when I'm done doing my main shaping. And I'm going to show you guys how I do pressure flaking. It's a little different from what I've seen other guys do. And it pretty much only works on slabs. So this is a slab I cut. It's fairly thin, a little under a quarter of an inch. So this will be a really thin point. Probably not going to go this full length. It'll probably break somewhere in here, so we'll shorten the point accordingly. And here we go. Alright, here's my slab. Looks pretty opaque right now. Once we start napping it, you'll start to see the transparency of it. So what I'm going to do to start is just abrade all of my edges just so that it's you know nice and roughed up. Obsidian and glass puts off a lot of dust so you either want to wear a dust mask or you want to do this in a well ventilated or windy place you know just you don't want to breathe a lot of this in you know there's a risk of silicosis when you're flint napping just like pretty much anything that has to do with silica so that's it. I'm just going to go ahead and abrade the edges. I'll just show you what I do. And this is just a grinding stone. I'm not sure if this is aluminum oxide or silicon dioxide. One of the two or silicon carbide, I'm not sure what this is. Okay, and then get the ends. Okay, so now that you've done that, I'm just going to roughen up the tip of my abrader here, or my abrader, my pressure flaker. This was really simple. It's just a piece of Schedule 80 PVC pipe with a, a half an inch with half an inch dowel in it. Drilled a couple holes to accept these nails and undersized the holes tremendously and then just pounded these in. They're pretty much in to stay. So I just like to abrade the tip of my pressure flaker. In the beginning here, I want something a little more rounded, but something that will grip. 
So I'm not actually taking off material, I'm just putting scratches on the tip here. Now what I like to do is I have a leather pad. You may want to wear gloves. I don't wear gloves a lot with this. Okay. So now what I'm doing is, if you can see, I'm taking my flaker and just placing it kind of in the middle. So you have your slab here. I just want to set it right along this middle line. And I'm going to be pushing in and then flicking down. And we'll see what that does. So, gonna go in and down. Okay. I just kind of took a little bit off. So, I'm gonna do that again. You can see I'm kind of chipping this out here. So I'm just going to do that again. You can see more of it's kind of chipped out and broken in a little bit. So that's pretty much how I pressure flake. I just push in and down. You can see I'm starting to get some flake scars going across. So I just keep doing that. Go about halfway down. Press. You can see that. There's my first side, and my glasses are kind of fogging up, so... Oh, that's another thing. Make sure to wear eye protection. Safety glasses or any kind of glasses. You don't want to get glass in your eye. Or rock in your eye or anything. So here you can see my first side. So now I'm going to go ahead and just do the same thing to this other side. I don't mess with the ends until later on. Push in and down. Ooh, interesting. Alright, so there's my second side. And you can see there's a lot of spots in the middle that I didn't get. I'll get those eventually, but right now my main goal is to just get these edges prepared for what I'm about to do to them. Now I'll just go ahead, flip it over, and do the exact same thing. Kind of refresh the grinding a little bit. So far, pretty boring. I'm just kind of doing the same thing over and over again. So I'm just going to pick up the speed a little bit and probably 
shorten the point in the process. And so you can see I spaced my flakes about oh, an eighth of an inch apart or so. A little more than an eighth of an inch. Personally, for me, the, the spacing is not so important. What you do here is not that important. The only thing is you just don't want to break your point. Because it's easy to put too much pressure on it and just snap it in two. Or break it into tiny little pieces. You know, snapping in half isn't so bad. It's when you break it into tiny little pieces. So here's our third edge. Now just flip it over and do the other side. Okay, so now you see I've got the second edge done. You can start to see that kind of nice transparency. You can kind of see through it. All right, now the next step is I work from the ends and I'm going to thin this going back and forth from both sides sort of. And what I'm doing essentially is the same thing I did on this. I'm not going to be creating platforms to flake on, like how you're supposed to. I'm just going to go back on every peak that I've made. You see these little points? I'm just going to go back to each one of those and basically flake that off. I'm just going to flake, flake, flake. And I'm going to create what are known as step fractures or hinges, which are... If you see these little areas in the middle where the flakes don't quite meet up with each other, that's a, uh, that's a hinge. I'm basically going to be creating a lot of those, then we're going to pressure through them and clean this up. Hopefully. That's the plan anyway. Okay. So having said that, I'm going to take my abrader stone, re-abrade. kind of concentrate on those points. Okay. So, starting at the end, I just find one of those and just start snapping. And I just want to kind of snap into it until I reach the middle point. So you see how I've crunched into it until I've reached the halfway point and then I want to stop there we go into the halfway point now I turn it around and I do the other side and just kind of smash into it till I get to the halfway point Now you can see what I've done. It's not very pretty right now, but I've established my edge. And once I abrade that, I'll have some good platforms to do some nicer uh, flaking. When you're doing this, you can actually thin a slab down. Because once I've got this edge here, if I just go back and take a layer off and then turn it around and take a layer off that whole layer will be removed and it'll be thinner so that's one way to thin everything else after this is all going to just be shaping I won't be doing any thinning from this point on this is pretty much as thin as it's going to be when I'm done so enough talking I'm gonna keep working so I'm kinda of going back and I just wanna kinda of get not the very ends, but just the points 
that go into the ends. Okay. So now go in a little more. And once I've gone in about an inch on one side, then I'll flip over and do the other side. The reason why I work from the out in instead of just going straight across or going from the inside out is I like to keep the center thick. Do my last work in the middle, especially on a long point like this or a long slab like this. If I snap it right in the middle when I've done everything else, then I have two smaller points. That's not bad. So, <laughs> yeah. so now I've got this edge here. Flip it around. Do the other side. So once you've kind of crunched through that, crunch through that, turn it around, or flip it over, and crunch through the other side. Okay. Now just keep going. So one thing I wanted to talk about too is the way I'm holding this. I'm not holding in the middle. I'm putting pressure. I'm not holding near the end. I'm just kind of cupping the back here, trying to keep the vibrations that are caused from this from going all the way through and cracking this piece. So once I've got that, I'm going to turn it around and just snap off a bunch of stuff on the other side. There we go. Now that's all done on that tip. So I'm just going to keep on going. I'm going to start from this side now. I'm just going to keep on going. Cut at my normal speed, just so you guys can see. I'm going to go ahead and kind of mark sections in this video. So it'll all be here because it's probably going to be a long video. It'll all be here, but you can skip ahead if you don't want to watch me doing every little thing.
So now this is kind of a critical part. I'm pretty close to the center here. As you can see, I've gone about halfway, almost halfway on this side, and almost to halfway on this side. So this is the critical part. I usually start with slabs this long because I pretty much expect to snap it in the middle. And if I snap it here, I can get two nice little arrowheads. And it won't be a loss. Keep going. As you can see, I'm almost there. Turn it around. All right, <laughs> must be my lucky day or something, because I didn't break it yet. So now I've just got this little piece here. And this little piece here. Let's pick either side. Just do one side at a time. So this is what this point, or this blade looks like at this point. We've got flakes going on either side, and it's got a rough sort of uh, lens shape, sort of a convex shape to it. You can see from the end, kind of a nice lens shape. It's a good foundation. All the other flakes we do on this will build upon that. Now this is going to be a rather thin blade, a, a narrow blade. Normally I like to start with slightly wider slabs than this. It's going to be really long. So now just take my abrader. <clears throat> So I take my abrader and just run it down the whole edge. So you can see the white spots, the flat spots, are points that have kind of gotten abraded down. Now I want to start refining my shape. Looking at this, 
it is really way too thin. Okay, I'm going to go ahead right now and I'm going to snap this in half. And we'll work on two smaller, we'll work on a smaller, say, two inch point. So, just go ahead, kind of grab it in half. I'll take my piece of leather here, figure out where the halfway point is, and just apply pressure. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, it's not breaking. Alright. So, since it's being tough, this is really too narrow of a blade for me. So, I'm just going to start just flaking straight into it as if I were doing notches. Kind of line them up on the same level. Do them real deep. Just kind of make a meat in the middle. And they don't even have to meet. There we go. Alright, so I've broken them in half. Let's see, pick a side. I'll work with this. It's got some interesting character to it. There's my tiny little blade blank. So I'm going to go ahead and braid it on both sides. And braid this fresh edge. As much as possible, I don't want it to be shiny anymore. Okay. So now, I'm going to start refining the shape. Figure out which side is thinner. So this is going to become my point. Because I've got a lot of stuff to remove here. And on this side, I've got a lot of stuff to remove. But this isn't bad. It looks pretty clean. So let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. So to do this, I'm just going to push straight in with my flaker, just straight down. So what I'm doing, if you can see, I'm moving my center line in that direction. So I'm flaking down this way, and it's moving the center line in that direction. So I do that a little bit. Now that the center line's been moved, I braid it. You can see I've got these little platforms here, or these little flat spots. Oh, focus! Okay. I've got these little flattened spots here. So I want to take my flaker, rest it right on that flat spot, and push. And I've got a little flake here. So, go to the next one. Push it. Okay. And then that one went, and you can see it actually broke through some of the step fractures. And that's what we want to do from here on out. Just sort of crunch through all of the step fractures until we have a clean edge.
And that's pretty much the only way at this, uh, with this method are you going to end up with anything that looks good. You gotta sort of crunch through everything. So now I've got a fairly decent shape. The tip's starting to take shape, so I'm gonna work on this side. Same thing. Just kind of crunch everything away. And then push hard and take your longer flakes. I still want to sort of refine this edge, so I want to push straight in and start making my tip. And then I just want to kind of start going down the whole edge, trying to get this into the shape I want. Just go to the other side. So up to this point, everything's been pretty one-sided. You can see it's all running on one side here. Just gonna a braid, and then come back, and start to refine my shape here. So now my goal is to bring everything back to center. Wherever things aren't centered, I just kind of remove flakes until the center line comes back to where it was. You can see there's a little bit of a lump on this side here. So I brought this edge a little higher and I'm going to knock that down. Starting from the tip. And there. That lump is gone. Now it's a nice, nice transition to the tip. And you can see I've got some nice flake scars there. So far, it's looking fairly good. Just want to bring everything back to center line.
sort of grind it kind of to the shape I want. Not grind it too much. Find all the spots that are kind of standing out and then just knock them down. At this point, I want to sort of abrade the tip of my flaker. So it grips a little better. So, there we go. Re-braid. Braid this back edge. I'm going to start shaping the back. I'm just going to kind of thin this out. So I'm going to be doing something a little different. Instead of sort of crunching into it, I'm going to go from one side so you can see the top here. Grab onto one edge and then tilt the point up like this. Up here. So I'm going to bring the flaker in like this and down. Because I'm going to be basically popping off an edge. A little catch. Ah, there we go. You see, I kind of just popped up an edge there. I just want to go and make sure I just pop off the same edge. Just do that all the way down the back. You want to make sure that the point is well supported or it will snap right in half. Okay. Now you see that? It's not even, so I'm just going to flake on the one side until my base is nice and even. Not quite there yet. Okay. I see it's nice and even. I go abrade that edge and then just go straight down. So I flipped over my point, flipped my point over. Okay. Braid it. Then do that again. I like doing it this way because you get a nice thin edge or a thin back end for uh, mounting onto an arrow shaft or something, but you don't get a lot of step fractures that go into the finished piece and you know make it look ugly. So I've gone ahead, flipped it over, so now I just want to finish off my bottom edge there we go now I'm just going to do one more pass and now I'm going to turn my flaker around and use the fine side like I did with the other flaker 
just want to round this down into a fine point. So now I'm just looking at it and targeting the points that aren't quite right. I'm just trying to get it all at center line. It looks pretty good. Just kind of true up the shape on the ends. So once I get started with this tool, once I've done my layers of flaking, I don't abrade anymore. Because now I want, you know, nice sharp edges. So that looks pretty good. There's a little bit of roughness right here. So what I'm going to do is kind of just flick up and down, up and down, up and down. I'm just going up and down, up and down on the edge. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that bottom there. Now I want to take this, go along both edges and just True everything up. So I'm going to do a braid one last time on both sides. And I'm done with the braiding this point. Now this is all about bringing the center line to true, just truing up the shape of the point. And what this thinner flaker will do is it'll throw thinner flakes, and these thinner flakes will travel travel longer than the thicker flakes we were throwing earlier.
right. So now I'm just going to refine this edge a little bit more. You can see it's a little uneven. So I'm going to work from here. And then what I'm doing is I'm just pushing straight down. What this ends up forming is sort of a rounded edge. The rounded edge is not as sharp as the sort of razor sharp edge we were getting before. Oh, you can see I'm pushing straight down. You can see here it's a little more rounded. It's not as sharp. But this is plenty sharp. This sort of rounding it when it's this thin just makes it a little makes the edge a little more resistant to breakage and chipping it makes the point overall tougher because you know obsidian is really sharp these edges are really sharp not as sharp as a more acute angle but that's your trade-off we want this point to be somewhat strong so if I actually shoot it at something it doesn't just snap in half it'll actually do its job so there we go almost done I'm going to turn around and I do the exact same thing I did on this side to the other side. First let me get this little thing sticking out. Okay. So now I want to do the exact same thing I did on that side to this side. It's all about just refining the shape. getting the right center line if I need to refine the the shape and do some longer flakes I just push before I, I just push in before I flick down Almost done, just let's see. Pop a couple longer flakes off the tip. Okay, 
There's a little bit of crunching in here that needs to be remedied. Now the edge kind of crumbles if it's too thin. So you can fix that by kind of flicking up. That helps kind of a braid, kind of semi a braid um, that prepares a, a place for your flaker to grip. It's also called a platform. Okay, almost done. Okay, so I'll just kind of visually inspect it, see how the edges are running. I could use just a little more refinement here. Maybe one right there. Okay. So here's my point. I'm pretty happy with it. It's got fairly good symmetry. Mm. Oh, that's kind of bugging me, so let me just work that out real quick. go. Now I'm going to be doing my notches. I'm just going to do a really simple side notch here. So put my point somewhere I won't drop it. And then I just upgrade the point of my flaker. You know, before a sharp point wasn't that important. But now I need the point to be pretty sharp. Okay. Alright. So I figure out where I want my notches. I'm thinking I'm just going to do it right here. About, oh, maybe a quarter inch from the back. So really simple. I just start... Take a flake, kind of up pick, take another flake, turn it around, up pick, take a flake, kind of look at it and see how it looks. It's really, it's barely there. So, up pick, take a flake. Now I flip it over, and uh, this time I just kind of take from the forward edge a little bit because I don't want to accidentally go too deep into here and break out a huge chunk. So I'm doing that now. Just to warn you guys, I'm not good at notching. I don't like notches that much. On points I actually shoot. I actually do sort of a, oh, I normally do a sort of swept back point, almost like a teardrop shape, that then halves on and there's a nice transition. Though, ever since I went to the nap in, and fellow YouTuber Sean Woods, a uh, formerly historic hunter, he gave me this arrow. This is one of his hunting arrows. 
And you can see the beautiful transition on that point. So ever since I saw this point, I've been doing that a lot more. It reminds me of the favorite style, my favorite style of steel broadhead. But back to this point, you just kind of go pick up, push in and down. I'm not going to make this notch too deep. Sort of a medium depth. Just enough so you could latch this to something. Alright, so there's that notch. Now I just want to start another one to match it. So start where we started. A pick. And down. Look at it, figure out how do I make the match. Go in, a pick, down, a pick, down, down. Oh, okay. So this is what I was hoping to avoid. I kind of blew out a huge section there. Ah, so, time to improvise. So I'm going to try and match the, uh, whoa. So much for matching. <laughs> All right, I'll make this a little bigger, and I guess we're just going for wide notches tonight. I might turn this into a different style of point then, if I have to do this. I'm going to bring both notches up a little more, and then I'm going to bring these back and kind of round them. So. Go back here. This is the notch I kind of messed up that got too big. Just kind of truing up the edge there. So you can see I've flattened up this top and then rounded off the back. I want the edge to look crisp, so I'm just going to go in and Clean it up a little bit. All right. Now I've got to do the same thing to the other side. Time to make the match. Like my dad always says, if you make a mistake, just try to go with it and fix it because nobody will know you made a mistake if your finished product looks really well. Of course, you guys will know that I made a mistake because you're watching me make it. So, yeah. <laughs> My secret is in your hands. Okay. So almost done. It's getting pretty symmetrical. Just gotta sort of round it. Just keep bringing it back and forth. Doing it back and forth is going to dull up the edge, make it more resistant to breakage. Okay. Now it's pretty symmetrical. I don't really like how that point looks now, so I'm going to go from the end here. I want to support it as much as I can and I'm going to start a little notch on the bottom. It's just 
go straight in from the bottom. Make sure I make it evenly spaced here. Nice and centered. Kind of a large-ish thing. So here's what I've got so far. It's a little off on this side. So I'm just going to trim this back. And then I'm going to kind of change the way this thing looks and just take off this point on the bottom and kind of angle it back. So instead of a point, there's an angle. And do that to the other side. Oops. Okay. So here it is. I don't know if this is a historical point, but <laughs> it is what it is. So, here's the finished point. Alright, so here's the finished point. You can see it. Overall, it came out pretty good. I've got some step fractures, some hinges going on, so it's not perfect. I think overall it came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it, all things considered. Now my pressure flaking, I'm not, you know, super good at pressure flaking yet, but it's a lot better than my percussion flaking as far as being efficient. So here's a slab which is the same dimensions as the one we worked with. And you can see it's pretty close from point to slab, or from slab to point. It's pretty close. You know, I could get two of these out of this one slab. And there isn't a lot of waste. You see, the point is just a bit thinner than the slab. Not much waste at all. And for example, this is a point that I made all percussion with a little bit of retouch at the end. And it started off with a chunk about this big. So you can see both these points are approximately the same size. This is the slab. You can really only half of this. And then this chunk of rock. <laughs> Another example I have are these two points. You can see this one was pressure flaked from a slab, and this one was percussion nap from a spall. So, just so you can get an idea, they're both about the same thickness about the same overall dimensions. The slab started off with a slab about this big. And, and this guy actually I had a nodule like a almost like a almost completely round and I split that in half. So the other half of this became this. And I only had enough, I could only make the one point. The flakes that were coming off weren't big enough to make arrowheads. So, you know, I've got this, 
or this. So I'm working on getting better and not being so wasteful, but it's going to take some time for me to get up to that level. So for right now, this is my most efficient way of making points using pressure flaking. So there it is. Now, for those of you that have watched all the way to the end of this video, I know it's a long video, I was thinking I might do a little bit of a contest, you know, something a little different. So, I actually have a couple videos filmed, and I haven't put them up yet, but there's one particular video that I'm going to be posting up next. I wanted to have a little contest. The first person who can guess and put down in the comments what the next video is going to be about, I will send them this point. So just as a hint, the next video is going to be archery related and I'm going to be making something. I'm going to show how to make something. It's going to be something that I haven't shown how to make before. Something that's been requested. Something that I've never really discussed much. So, those are your hints. It's kind of ambiguous. There's a lot of things it could be. So, the first person to guess what the next video will be about, I will send you this point. And no, it's not a joke. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. And also, let me know if you guys want to see more flint napping videos. It's a little boring, and I might, you know, speed things up or shorten things down. But, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.